I've meditated every day. This is what has happened. I've started doing videos on how I've meditated every day. But more importantly than that, probably, is that uh, my assumption of who I am has been challenged because I have a daily experience of consciousness that is distinct from my individual sense of myself. Not to say that often when I sit down meditating, I just sort of close my eyes and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, just stuff going on in my head. And I think all you're doing really is closing your eyes. The type of meditation that I primarily do is called transcendental meditation. It's just the name. It's a form of mantra meditation where you think a word given to you by your teacher. And whenever you notice you're not thinking that word, you return to it. Eventually, through the repetition of this word, sometimes the mind kind of sinks into a state of deep, awareness where you are not continually involved in the construction of inner narrative put simply the sense of thinking continually like oh i think I, oh god this meditation is a bit boring or oh, that was terrible this thing happened oh, i wish i could do that i'd like to maybe one day i will learn how to do scuba diving like that stops and there's just a beautiful sense of peace I notice that part of the point of meditation is to return myself continually to the present, to the moment, to watch how I have a tendency mentally to be thinking about something from the past or projecting to something in the future as kind of inability to just be still and be present in the moment. The mantra gives the mind something to do so that it has that to think. It's like your little mind's a child and you give it a yo-yo or a biscuit or something, or a PS4 these days, and you say, you play with that, I'll be over here. Now, as that particular piece of language suggests, it's as if the thinking mind is not the ultimate self, almost as if there are many, many selves. If you think of the uh, Olympian pantheonistic model, it's like there's the God of War, the God of Love, the Messenger God, the Ultimate God, the God of Under the Sea, the various different forms of deities. Meaning, in practical and individual terms, that sometimes I am governed by their different humours. When my blood is up, I'm a different person. There are decisions I'll make when I'm angry, or decisions I'll make when I'm fearful, that I would never consider making otherwise. Meditation means that the a crucible or the screen upon which all of these images are reflected becomes somewhat not elevated but at least i'm aware i'm aware like say all the gods live on mount olympus i'm aware of myself as mount olympus and not all of the different gods i'm aware that hold on i'm the continuum or in the language of rumi i am a guest house and there are many visitors jealousy sadness rage anger love you know and when you're in love consumes you and there's nothing but the love that's why it's so beautiful isn't it that early bliss of falling in love that giddy euphoria that almost hysteria the moments when you find out they like you too and you go what did you and then you have those first revelatory conversations what about there when we were talking that time yeah oh my god i already liked you then ah oh, the giddy silly bliss of those days to be free from the self, almost like what we really want is to be free of the self. We will take drugs to be free of the self. We watch movies to be free of the self. We buy clothes, eat food, fall in love to be free of the self. And yet, what do we, are we continually telling one another? Be yourself, be yourself as if that something could be realized through this constructed identity. Meditation helped me to understand that I am not what I think and feel. I am witnessing what I think and feel. that, And as I do that, I'm less likely to get involved in altercations, conflicts or problems that are as a result of my thoughts and feelings. They still happen and I still have the thoughts and feelings, but my relationship with them is changing, it's getting easier. Furthermore, I'm more relaxed, more calm, less concerned about external things, less tied to material things, still have those things i've been long indoctrinated and incult and uh, inculcated by the culture i was born into so i still care what other people think about me want people to respect me and be attracted to me all of those things that come with being a human animal socialized in the time that i was socialized but by having access to these 
you know, ancient archaic principles of meditation. My perspective on myself and my life changes. And in fact, that's the point of them. That's why I always say that the mindfulness movement as an extraction of spiritual principles from their theological underpinnings is a disrespectful thing. Do some mindfulness in order to become a better lawyer and then crack on. Even though I've heard very great teachers say, you know, your meditation will improve you, your accountancy or your lovemaking. David Lynch even once said to me when I was a lot younger, you will enjoy pornography even more when you meditate. But the true goal for me of the spiritual experience is to be free of watching pornography, to be free of caring about my professional duties, except for as they bear on helping others. You know, I have to be a comedian that's useful to other people. I have to be a comedian that is loving in my personal relationships, that the aim becomes a kind of service of a mm, higher or dis different good, a different good, not just contained within my individualistic, materialistic, rationalistic needs. I am me. I'm going to die one day. I better get as much stuff for me and my family as I possibly can. All those ideas, they abide in me. Yes, they do. But my journey, my intention, the map that I follow is one of transcendence. And by transcendence, I mean, first and foremost, we transcend the belief of who we are. And then perhaps together we can transcend the ideas of what a society is. We can start to think about, well, how could we form different systems, different communities together? How can I relate to other people differently? Is it possible that every interaction I have ends with that person feeling a little better for having known me, not somewhat diminished or you know, somehow, I don't know, uh, hurt or cheapened or wounded or dismissed, you know. So it has, on one level, it's very simple and it's about kindness and recognition that who I thought myself to be was a construct. On a deeper level, it's the recognition that we are all one, that we probably all access the same place through meditation. And I probably, I say, as if that can be ever proven. But it seems that there's a sort of a perennialism, a universalism to the way that these states are described throughout history and throughout various forms of documentation, even though the language might change. Well, it might be the angel Gabriel, or it might be the Holy Ghost, or it might be some transcendent mystical force, or it might be the bliss of oneness, or the, you know, the freedom from the wheel but it all for me seems like the same place we're all heading we're all heading in the direction of oneness we're all heading in the direction of love and meditation is an invaluable tool on facilitating that journey that's why i meditate every day and that's why you should meditate every day hello i'm doing these new videos more frequently now please hit the notification button at the end of this video because then you'll get a, like a little bell when uh, I post a new video and I'd like you to get a little bell when I post a video then I can I don't know be buzzing away in your pocket sounds like I'd be like a little pocket mosquito anyway subscribe click the bell because I want more people to watch the YouTube videos you specifically